Hello, everybody. Today, we are doing a studio hangout with four of the Art Prof staff. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. This is our first virtual hangout, and we're all going to be doing something a little bit different. So, Deep Deep, what are you going to do today? I'm animating as per usual. Um, I'm animating on Procreate using my iPad, and I'm kind of just improvising as per usual. Um, so I will be, I've done a little bit. Um, I think the playback is a little choppy, so unfortunately maybe you won't be able to see it as smoothly, but I just did a little bit prior to the stream starting, and I'm just going to keep going with the flow and see what happens. So that's me. Kat, what are your plans? for our studio hangout. <laughs> I took this really weird picture of a bunch of ugly dolls. I posted it into Discord for those of you who are on Discord. If anybody knows the names of these dolls, please tell me because I don't know what they are. But I thought they were so weird that I would just draw a still life of them in markers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's somewhat related to your graphic novel you're working on, right? Yeah, my graphic novel is about an antiques shop. And so I've been going around taking a lot of pictures of unique antiques and these ugly dolls definitely cut it. <laughs> and Jordan, what are you up to for our studio hangout? Uh, I am doing a little portrait painting study. So we'll see how far I get in the time limit. Usually these take me multiple hours, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. So. Has well, no relationship. Jordan, is this just for is this just for practice or is it for a project? Yeah, just for practice. There's no like overarching thing. I just uh it's just something I want to get better at. So I figured, you know what, why not just do it on the stream a little bit? So yeah. So I hope all of you are in your studio making your own personal work. Tell us in the comments what type of project you are working on because I feel like we're just back in art school right now. It's awesome. <laughs> what are you working on, Clara? Well, I am actually trying out all these new art supplies that I've never used before. And I want to give a big thank you to Yasutomo, who sent us all of these wonderful goodies. For example, I am going to be using their traditional Japanese watercolor set. Like, look at how gigantic these cakes are. This is insane. Like, I've never seen watercolor cakes that are this gigantic. And they're really rich and very vibrant. And so what I did here was just a quick wash of the watercolor. And it's on top of this paper that I've never used before. It's called mineral paper. Kat or Deepti, have you guys ever heard of this? Mineral? No, I've never. Why is it called mineral paper? Uh, it says, made from calcium carbonate, providing a unique texture for water-based or dry media. I mean, the best way I can describe the mineral paper, it's sort of like really soft Yupo paper. So it's got that slick surface, but it doesn't feel as plasticky as Yupo. But as you can see, you can definitely paint with it with wet media. So I'm really interested to try the oil pastel over the watercolor. And if you don't know about Yasutomo, the company, they have so many cool art supplies that I didn't know about until I talked to them. Because for the longest time, I've used their hockey brushes, I've used their inks and stuff like that. So I knew about those products. But the mineral paper, I've never used that before. These Japanese watercolors, I've never used before. And they also have these oil pastels that I'm also trying out for the first time. So I like doing these hangouts because I can just mess around a little bit and just play with things. Hey, Kat, you got to tell us how Shang-Chi was. 
So I watched that recent Marvel film, Shang-Chi, which stars an East Asian superhero. It was really good. I'm actually not a big fan of action uh, superhero movies in general, but Shang-Chi had a little bit of everything and I was very satisfied. It had good action sequences, obviously. It had a good backstory. The sequence, the pacing of events also felt quite natural. And I liked how the flashbacks felt really naturally integrated in the story as well. And as an East Asian person, I really appreciated how much detail there was in terms of like cultural references in Shang-Chi, such as when Shang takes off his shoes to enter a house or the character that Aquafina plays feels that Asian, what is it, diaspora? <laughs> she prefers her English name over her Chinese name and stuff like that. So it had like a lot of really great details and overall as a story, it was very strong. So definitely go watch it. <laughs> I've seen so much hype over it and um, I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but I really want to check it out because I've heard nothing but amazing stuff and they all have just the best things to say. You're the first one to talk about like the little details that I've heard though. Mm. Well, I have those experiences, so I'm able to recognize them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, even if you don't have those experiences, it is a satisfying action movie to watch. Sweet. <laughs> Love a satisfying action movie. Mm -hmm. Didn't they say it broke all these records, which is incredible because it's been released during COVID? Good for them. Did, did that happen? Wait, what, what, what record did yeah, you it, hear? I think it was like a Labor Day weekend record. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Speaking of pandemic box office record stuff, I think I heard somewhere where it was like Trolls 2, the, the musical. Oh, no movie that no. terrible animated sequel no like it changed the course of cinematic history or something because since the pandemic hit they decided to release it completely online and people were like oh i just have to pay like this one-time fee and i get to watch this movie however times i want sure and so it actually broke all records of like its opening because it was completely digital and it was during the pandemic oh wow well, did you guys hear about the Scarlett Johansson thing, how she was complaining that Black Widow was released on streaming and it was going to affect how much money she made? I was like, really, Scarlett Johansson? Really? I don't know. I'd like to hear Deep D's opinion on that because like, I know that she doesn't necessarily need the money, but she has the platform and the power to fight against a really major corporate power. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of minor actors don't have that power. Yeah, I felt kind of that way too. I was like, I feel like she's doing this more. I mean, I don't love Scarlett Johansson for other reasons. <laughs> um, but like, I think that she is using her platform, like you said, Kat, to hopefully like shine a light on like people getting paid, especially women getting paid in the industry. Don't love her choices and roles sometimes, especially when she's playing like Asian characters. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I, I was kind of happy that she spoke up about it because yeah, she doesn't definitely need the extra money, but I feel like that happens a lot to people who, like you said, don't have the platform. So baby steps. We have a comment from Baparistic who says, I was drawing along the mushroom stream using the phone. There's one mushroom that has so many wrinkles, each are with its lighting and sharing. Clara, you're an expert in wrinkles. Any advice? I think try to squint a lot and don't try to draw one wrinkle at a time. It's almost like you want to draw the wrinkles as a group of wrinkles. And that can really help because wrinkles are really hard. I mean, Jordan, you've drawn a lot of clothing. <laughs> what are your tips for wrinkles? Uh, the only thing I can really say is just you got to think about the overall design. Um, you definitely don't want to overdo it. And I think in most situations, less is more because 
when you start getting super busy, it just takes away from the overall effect of what you're drawing. Oh, you know what I just discovered? So I just put down this oil pastel here, gray, and it was way too dark. And so I just took the rag to wipe it down a little bit and it's like really smooth on the mineral <laughs> paper. I kind of love that. <laughs> So Amaris is saying, learn to crochet this week to make crochet portrait tapestry. It's a new skill and similar to the skill I learned in knitting, but easier. Textile art is now digitizing portrait, now making a pattern. Ooh, I never did textiles. Deepthi, did you ever take textiles at art school? No, I wish I did though. I feel like I would have really enjoyed it. Kat, did you? I did not, but I had a lot of friends who had that as their major. And in the art school I went to, textiles is one of the most hardworking majors. They pull the most all-nighters and they're known to constantly be on the grind. So that kind of deterred me away from it because of how much work it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's so real. Because honestly, a lot of it is just picking up a skill and learning how to use, to do that skill efficiently. And so you have to put in a lot of hours and busy work. So you can never truly know how long a project will take you unless you have a lot of experience. And it's hard when you're a beginner. I don't understand, Kat, why you're one of the most hardworking people I know. And yet you're always like, I don't want to do that. That's too much work. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Life is all about hardship, Clara. <laughs> oh. No, this I did not know. Thank you for enlightening me. <laughs> I think honestly, I'm still trying to balance that thought of I need to work hard, but I also need to take care of myself. So that's why I'm like, oh, I will work hard, but I will also say working hard sucks. You have to take breaks for yourself sometimes. <laughs> so mixed messages is basically what you're sending everybody? I'm just trying to find a good balance, Clara. <laughs> it's the struggle. The struggle of the artist. God, you guys are such drama queens. Excuse me? <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking about. No, Jordan, you're not a drama queen. I'm the drama queen. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dipti, what are you drawing? Like, I like look I know, over and there's this like squishy like. <laughs> just trying some shapes moving around. Like I said, no, no, no pressure. No, you know plan just drawing some squishy shapes so i love how dragoon of envy says dishes for the moment but i'm working on halloween themed stickers using watercolor gouache and colored pencil oh man is halloween coming up that soon it's next month it's so what? yeah what happened COVID. By the way, I want to give a shout out to RV Dick. Thank you so much for the super chat. Of course, we always appreciate your support. <laughs> I always love those animations. You're the best. <laughs> well, I'm curious. To hear from all of you, when's the last time all of you sat down to just do whatever art without the pressure of, oh, it's a gig, or, oh, I need to do this and get this done? Um, Let's start with you, Jordan. I might have been 14. 
I feel like every time I sit down and draw, it's always like the pressure, like get better, improve, deadlines, you know? So um, even with my personal work, there's always a greater goal than mine. So when you ask that question, I'm not really sure <laughs> how to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Deep is what you're doing right now, does that count as just whatever art time? Definitely. Yeah. I, do, I don't think I have, would give myself the option of doing something like this. Um, otherwise, like, I don't know. I am sad to say like a sketchbook practice is rare right now in my hectic little life. So I feel like I am kind of doing like a sketchbook practice right now. That's what this feels like, but like a moving sketchbook practice. Kat, yeah, when's the last time you just sat and did whatever? I honestly don't know. I think the most clear moment in my memory of me actually doing that, I remember was probably in February. <laughs> I know this because that's when we got chickens. My family got chickens, chicks. <laughs> and I drew the little chicks. That's honestly the last time I remember drawing just for whatever, without a goal in mind. Well, I guess my question for everybody is, do you miss that? having that leisure time. Yeah. I would Art love is, to do this more often. Yeah, it's fun. It doesn't have to be work all the time. Yeah, I agree. It's something that I wish I could do more often. But I think for me, it's more of a mental thing, really, um, because I've forced my mind to think about, you know, jobs and outcome and performing and excellence and all that stuff, which is great on some level, but if it's repetitive, it can become very uh, damaging. <laughs> so it's something I think I gotta work on for myself. Yeah, the hustle is real, like trying to make sure that you're like able to pay your bills and survive too. Sometimes we're really cut into your fun time. Yeah. I, I still I enjoy like I it. Can never, I can never justify the playtime, you know? It's like, oh, I should be doing this. Oh, this is more important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What about you, Claire? When's the last time and that by you... By the way, say that again? I was going to say the last time that you, like, really had that free time outside of this, these, like, drawing strings? Uh, before I had kids? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> How did you know that, Deep D? What gave you the hint? <laughs> Kat, you know what I have to deal with. You've been around my kids before. <laughs> yes. I'm honestly surprised you could run our prof at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am too. It's 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 a real accomplishment. <laughs> oh, I like this comment from C. Cantrell. Just lost it. Oh, who says? Mental health is a justification for fun time. I'm going to start using that. See, Kendra. Mm -hmm. It's true. As artists, this is so like healthy to do. Oh my God, you know I what love else? this. I'm doing something with no consequence. You know what else is kind of tough for me? Watching movies without analyzing everything about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like figuring out how the story works and these plot points and this design and all that stuff. I, at this point, I just kind of watch it for like, all the stuff I can learn from it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I do that too. I think way too much about the performances and stuff. Oh, that's right. Cause you're an actress. That would make sense. Yeah. 
or I'll find myself like thinking about how I would have delivered a line and then I like lose what's happening because I'm like in my head for so long. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't think about that stuff at all. <laughs> I usually not don't think about that stuff when I watch it when I watch a film the first time. I usually try to lose myself, but I end up thinking about that when something sticks out to me as wrong in the first watch. <laughs> Mm. yeah i guess it depends on like what you do like for both jordan and i were like in the industry in different ways so it probably just sticks out to us more i i like trying to predict what's going to happen something i've never seen before um and seeing if it like makes sense like i was watching a series on netflix called um clickbait and it's like a murder mystery oh, that's that's too. You did? Okay, so now we know. Okay, so this is cool. So I guessed who I thought the culprit or the villain was going to be. And they just completely, they didn't even just do a left turn. They did like a U-turn. Oh, yeah. I same. I was so convinced I knew who it was. I wonder if we thought it was the same person. Well, well yeah, I don't want to give any spoilers for people who haven't seen it. Probably Kat and Claire have not even heard of it, but... Um, I've seen those, it on Netflix, but I haven't watched it. For for those who don't know, uh, basically it's uh it's like an eight episode uh, show. It's only going to be one season, and basically this uh, guy gets kidnapped, and there's a ransom on his. We're not a ransom. Well, they put a video out saying he's a, a abuser of women, that he killed a woman, and that at five million views, this that he's going to die. They put it up online. And then they have to figure out who's responsible. That's basically the whole premise of the show. And um, you go, and each episode focuses on a different person's um, perspective, like the wife, and then the sister, and the son, and you know all that stuff. So it's interesting. Yeah, they. So really we have a question here really from Ellie Fitz. Ellie Fitz track, but that. Ellie Fitzpatrick, I've been painting watercolor for the last eight months or so, but I realize my inability to draw is limiting what I can create. How do you recommend getting better at, quote, rendering things I see? Kat, you have any ideas? Rendering things, well, I'm not sure about watercolor. I feel like watercolor is a difficult medium to start out with. I think Clara would be a better answer for that. But if I were you to practice drawing, I would try to draw things from the observation first with a simpler tool like a pencil or maybe even charcoal or a drawing tool because watercolor is more for painting. Drawing tools are for drawing. And actually, we're going to have a video on our prof soon about the drawing track. <laughs> but it's not out yet, just yet. But I, yeah, I would just draw things in proportion and observe things and keep a sketchbook and practice drawing before actually attempting watercolor. What are your thoughts on that, Clara? I would say don't start with watercolor. I think watercolor is freaking hard. And I took years before I even tried it again after feeling so horrified by how difficult it was. And even then it took a long time. Feel like i'm just now starting to feel like i have somewhat of a command over it but yeah i i would just put aside the watercolor i mean jordan i think you took a watercolor class right yes and it was torture um i <laughs> absolutely, i absolutely love the look of watercolor and i'm highly impressed by people who do it but it's a very challenging medium and i took a, it took me a long time to just kind of get it and I would often over, um, I put too much water in it and things wouldn't dry smooth. And it was just, it was rough. I was wondering how I even passed that class. <laughs> I mean, at the same time, I wouldn't discourage you from totally abandoning watercolor. We're just saying, if it doesn't work out for you right now, do not fret. It is naturally a very difficult medium. I just feel like people always make the assumption that oil is going to be the hardest paint medium because there's the whole like oil painters they're so awesome thing and yet i found oil much easier to control yeah me too i 
Really? I, don't know, I didn't feel like I had a lot of experience with oil painting when I was younger, but then I picked it up pretty fast. And I remember I tried doing the same with watercolor. It just totally fell flat. I was like, I'm never going to touch watercolor again. I'm just going to keep oil painting. <laughs> So the question is, Jordan, did you touch watercolor again after that class? Did I? Um, dang it, Claire, I don't remember. Um, not enough for me to have be able to say with a firm yes. <laughs> I probably did, though, <laughs> for a little bit. Well, Kat, we've got a comment for you from Slayer, who says, Kat, now you make me attracted to drawing chickens. A real chick magnet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A real chick magnet. That is prime, like, dad humor. I love it. <laughs> I knew this little girl who was around, I think I knew her from ages seven onwards, but when she was like seven or eight years old, when I first met her, I noticed that she was able to draw chickens so well because her family kept chickens. She just got the silhouette, the roundness, the fatness of a chicken really well, just in a simple drawing. I was like, wow, that's intense dedication. <laughs> You're a seven year old and you can draw super realistic chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so specific yeah that's kids awesome. are weird that's such an awesome skill to have yeah I, I can imagine her being in that situation where she's in a new place like school or something it's like all right everyone tell us three things about yourself and she names two and the last one's like i can draw chickens really really well like, <laughs> <laughs> That would make you so popular. Honestly, I feel like it would. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I would be so drawn to someone who could draw chickens really cool. Were That's all of you guys cool. the art kids in your middle schools, elementary schools when it, when you guys were younger? Of course, I was. <laughs> I. I definitely was. I was drawing Buzz Lightyear in kindergarten, and I got like an art award in my senior year of high school. I got an art award as well. Cool. It was I didn't pain. get an art award. You know why? <laughs> why? The teacher hated me. What? what? She did not. She was so mean. She had it out for me, and I'm not making this up because. I remember I was frustrated that the school I went to never had art shows or anything. And so I volunteered, I said, hey, I'll organize a show and we'll do this, this, and this. And she shut it down. She wouldn't let me have it. What? Why? Yep. Just because she's horrible. Ooh, dang. That's cold. And then, no, 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 it gets better. The year I left okay so i graduated and then the next year guess who had an art show not you it was her she decided to organize an art show the year after oh I left. wow that nice. is so That's petty classy. dang so you know i don't like to hold grudges i don't like about that one Honestly, some of the worst teachers I've ever met were in high school. <laughs> I'm like, okay, being a teacher is super Kat. hard. I have a lot of respect for teachers. We are teachers here, but some people shouldn't be teachers. Yeah, I can agree with that. Or they should have retired long before they stopped. That they <laughs> they had me as their student. There was, there was one teacher I had who um, 
I, I don't I don't even want to say his name because <laughs> but everyone here knows who I'm talking about in this in the group uh, the four of us and this person clearly needed to retire like 15 years before like the current year and he would recite the um, the assignment he would read the paragraph but he would read the paragraph like two or three times in a row like it was the exact same thing and we all just felt really bad for him like <sighs> Bro, um, this isn't good. This isn't good. Well, I'm not going to say which school because I did teach at several schools. I mean, I taught at Rizzi the longest, but one of the admins told me that one of the teachers was so out of it that he would just come into the office and say, Give everybody an A. Please do my grades for me. What? This is not a lie. This is true. Yes. That's not cool. For real. No. I mean, I guess that is cool that everyone gets an A. <laughs> like, dude, just, just retire, okay? Like, it's fine. <laughs> what are you holding on for? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that sounds eerily similar to like, just step into the light. Just step. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what movie is that from? You never heard that phrase before? <laughs> no. What is that phrase? <laughs> that basically just means like when a person's about to die, they see a light and they're just like, step into oh, the light. Oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> Well, we have a question here from the Void Quickening. What your opinions on the work of Francis Bacon? Deep, Deep you go first. Uh, oh my God, my mind is blanking. Who's Francis Bacon? Who's that? You go. <laughs> no, no, you were called first. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I, oh, okay, there we go. Um, I like. Francis Bacon's work. I'm like looking at it right now. Um, I don't know. I think I think it's like surreal and interesting and it's a little like cliche in my opinion, but I think that there's some interesting characters. That's my quick answer. All right, Jordan, you're next. I don't know who he is, so I'm looking him up right now. Yeah, I did a quick look up. I did a look up too. Before, but I'm not like you guys. Did you know history in the art school? I I fell asleep often in the art history seminars. I'm just being honest. God. Yeah. Same. No. Nope. <laughs> you guys are supposed to be role models for the next generation of artists. This is not both. But, I'm, but I'm also supposed to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if it's not an artist that you care about for your day to day, there's Google. I was like, honestly, really surprised with that question too, because I didn't know Francis Bacon was an artist. I only know the of the philosopher. What? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was yeah, one I that says you. the one that says like knowledge is power. <laughs> wait, okay, that I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. yeah. Was, only only bacon I can think of is Kevin Bacon, honestly. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> We're a mess. <laughs> Claire, you must be so ashamed of us right now. <laughs> I I am very you younglings and your lack of knowledge and you think you can well, just what do you Google think Google? of francis bacon hmm. i mean i feel like the reason he feels like a cliche is because he was the one that started the cliche like that whole screaming pope thing that he was really into i mean it's a cool painting but everybody's seen it too much i feel like maybe he's just a little oversaturated but i do like his work i think he's got really cool brush textures and I do like the distortion of his portrait. So yeah, I would say I'm a fan. That's 
That's well, now not. This bacon is. <laughs> W315 is asking, Clara, have you tried the Yasutomo watercolors? Do they feel any different, wet any different? First of all, I don't usually like the watercolor cakes. Most of the time, I would much rather use the tubes because I like when the watercolor is sort of soft and juicy. But these are really nice. It's nice that they're so big because most of the time, the watercolor cakes are really, really small. They're so small that you almost can't put your whole brush in it. And so I feel like for me, that's a really compelling case for these watercolors. Just like the scale of them is so different than what I'm used to. Okay. All right. I think we need to play. Jazz says, seven degrees of Francis Bacon. You guys ever play that game? No. What? No, what is that? What? You don't know what, what? I'm... Oh, I feel like I'm in Claire. a room with, like, first graders. Claire, be real. <laughs> None of us knew who Francis Bacon was. How are we going to know a game that has his name in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. That's what I meant. Sorry, I was getting all my Bacons confused. Oh. What is well, no, that? I don't know that. <laughs> Oh, you still don't know? Okay. Seven Degrees of France. Kevin Bacon is where you name a movie with Kevin Bacon in it. And then you have to say, okay, Kevin Bacon was in A Few Good Men with Tom Cruise. And then you say, Tom Cruise was in a movie with this person. And then that person was a movie. With, and then you just like make this chain of who's in what movie. Never played. Oh, I'd be so bad at that game. <laughs> Anyway, it's a good party game. That's fun. Kat, I was going to ask, the ugly dolls that you're drawing, aren't those just trolls? They're just trolls? Yeah, Are they? Good. Yeah. They feel, OK, they feel like a vintage version of trolls. Are they all the same franchise? Probably. I remember seeing them in Toy Story um, somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it's just trolls. Well, I'm glad that I drew them to the point where you could recognize them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said those are totally talk. trolls. Okay, right? That's what I, I think. So. I think this was a mistake to put the oil pastel with the watercolor because now there's like this resist going on and I can't remember where I put the oil pastel. I'm just so confused. Help. <laughs> I don't know if that's my lane, Claire. I'm just being real with you. <laughs> I don't you guys are not helping me. Yeah, first we don't know who Francis Bacon is. Now we leave you in the dust with the pastel and watercolor. We suck. not my lane. I just feel I feel so abandoned. Like we didn't abandon you, Claire. We just are useless for this conversation. You just went down a path that we don't know about. That's on you. <laughs> hey, you just wait. You guys are going to be old someday, and then that, <laughs> then we'll see what you say. Okay, G give it like what? What do you need? Like twenty years? No, you need fifteen. Fifteen is enough. What? <laughs> no, please, please. Come on. By oh. the time you're forty, you feel sort of out of date in terms of popular culture, right? To, to be honest, I feel that way now a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do not. About what? Mostly music. Yeah, but that's because you listen to music from like the 50s, Jordan. Of course you feel out of date. 70s and 80s. But that proves my point, though. Like, see, I'm out of date. I just, I can't, I don't even know the names of half of these people. Ooh, here's a question. Is Scarlett Johansson seven degrees away from Kevin Bacon? 
Well, Definitely. I know that Scarlett Johansson was in the movie with Hugh Jackman. That's all I need to know about her. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we literally all three of us went <laughs> sir, you're making me feel very isolated here you know it's really not nice you really got me trying to figure this out she is that far away from Kevin Bacon. Okay, wait, he's in Footloose. Who was else who else was in Footloose? Jane says Kevin Bacon was an X-Men first class with Michael Fassbender. I knew there was another reason Kevin Bacon existed. He was? Yeah, he was. He he's was the X-Men? bad guy with the, the the old not the old one, not the Hugh Jackman one, the, the recent one. You know with like young hot Magneto? <laughs> I need to do this more often. Just playtime. Don't we all need to do this more? We do. We really, really do. Like, why is life so freaking. Why is it so much work? to take care of yourself. Like, shouldn't taking care of yourself be sort of fun sometimes? Life is work, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what movie is this from? Life is pain, Highness. Come on, one of you has to know. Can we get a hand? Oh my God, I'm so disappointed. I've seen give us a hand. Like no, let's see if somebody in the audience knows. I bet somebody here knows. Dang. Someone's going to the follow up to that line. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Follow up to that line is life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says otherwise is selling something. That's a cool quote, though. Tap out. <laughs> Tap out. And so Jennifer Bride. Noel, Princess Bride. Thank you. Oh, okay. See, that's been on my list forever. I've been meaning to watch that. I love that movie, actually. Oh. I don't know that line. Who says that line? It's Wesley at the very end when he's trying to intimidate Prince Humperdinck and he's bluffing because he's actually like falling apart and then Prince Humperdinck gets all upset. Hmm. What an I unfortunate could probably recite the whole freaking battle of wits. Wait, what? Claire, what did you say? I said I could recite the whole battle of wits. Not like you younglings would know what I'm talking about. Uh, I feel like that last part was an add-on, but okay. <laughs> Oh, but I actually did watch one of the movies that Clara recommended called like Water for Chocolate. I really enjoyed that. Oh, <gasps> I love that movie. Isn't it yeah, so I, beautiful? Yeah, I actually want to give it a second watch because I just felt like I lost myself the first viewing because I was really enjoying it. And now I want to go back in and notice all of the allegories and the illusions and, you know, the brainy stuff about what makes a story good. <laughs> Deep, do you ever see that movie? No, what is it about? It's about, it's about these two people who are in love. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> is there Can is there more to it than that? Oh, oh. No, I was like that is like I can, movies. <laughs> I can explain some more. It's about this widowed mother who has three daughters, and it focuses on the youngest daughter who's in love. But they have a tradition where the youngest daughter has to stay unmarried and take care of the older family members. And so that way, you know, the love has an obstacle. Um, and then it gets a little messy from there. <laughs> Ooh, I love a mess. <laughs> Sounds dramatic. 
Yeah, I love how woman-driven it was. Yeah. Mm. Are there any actors? I women of all with? ages, not yes. just one generation. Yes. Are there any famous actors who I would know, perhaps, who are in it? Or is it kind of like an no. indie? It's kind of an old film, and it's also... Uh, it's an, a foreign film. It takes mm. place and is was produced in Mexico. Oh, I like foreign films. That's fun. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I liked it so much that I asked Clara for more film recommendations and she gave me a few. <laughs> I'm going to watch them someday. <laughs> See, these old people, we actually have something to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Whoa, that's taking a little far there, Claire. I don't think we ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you guys know that I'm salty. This is not news. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> no, I just like making you myself know what laugh. what you were signing on for. No, I just make myself laugh at this. It's just fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is it just me or is the stream frozen? Like, we can't see what we're drawing. Uh, oh, yeah, mine's frozen too. It's slow. I'm just getting to where I can actually move. Here we go. Anyway, people, please hang out with Kat, Jordan, and Deep D. They are going to be in the Art Prof Discord in a few minutes, hanging out in the live streams channel. So, going out and talk about younglings and old farts and all that stuff. And a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters for giving us all the resources. We need to make sure that our content is 100% accessible and free. Everybody, thank you so much for our hangout and tell us if you liked it in the Discord. We'll see you next time. Bye.